1988, and it doesn't happen. But it took hold. The secret rapture futuristic view took hold at that point, and they never let go. Then you got the view that was the view of the reformers, which is called the historist view. And that means Revelation really is a panorama that covers the history of the church between the first coming, Jesus said the time is at hand, it starts now, till the second coming, <coughs> the end of the book, and all things are restored. And so Revelation is for God's people in every age. And every lesson for every age is for every person. The seven messages to the seven churches are not just to those particular churches in history, but every individual sort of goes through sometimes phases of Ephesus, Smyrna, Philadelphia, Laodicea, Sardis, so forth. Uh, persons first converted there. They're uh, Ephesus. And they get persecuted by their family. Smyrna. They join a church. Philadelphia, brotherly love. Mm -hmm. Then they've been in the church for a while. Laodicea. <laughs> and so it's for every Christian. But uh, it really does cover the panorama of church history. And so we'll be sharing in this series uh, the future, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, not that. the historical view of uh, Revelation. Yeah, don't delete, edit that comment. <laughs> All right, so the main purpose of the book is redemption. Now read for me, please, John 14, verse 29. John 14, verse 29. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. All right, so God gives us prophecy so we will know how to invest in the stock market. Or how to pick flower numbers. Or how to plant our crops. Well, there was a place where God gave prophecy to Joseph to tell him how to plant his crops. Right? But typically prophecy is best understood looking backwards. God does not give us prophecy so that we can say the end is coming, let's go run for the hills, let's dig a hole, let's hide. He gives us prophecies so that when the prophecies come true, our faith grows. Hey, God saw this all coming. Prophecy is typically best understood looking backwards. Now, some of the prophets, they can look ahead and tell you exactly what's going to happen. If you believe them, you'll benefit from that. But, you know, most of my faith comes from the prophecies that have been fulfilled. My faith is strengthened that all things are in God's hands. I realize God is never in heaven worried. He knows exactly what's going to happen. That gives me peace that my life is in his hands. He knows what's coming, that what he said will happen. And so when I look at how God works in the prophecies, it's redemptive. Prophecy is principally redemptive. The book of Revelation is a book of salvation. It's a gospel book. It is not a prognostication book. It is not a big book of fortune cookies. It's a book of salvation. There is a lot of prophecy in there that came true, but don't think of prophecy as, ooh, ooh, I've got an inside track on what's coming. Prophecy is there so that as we preach prophecy, people say, wow, God knows all things. And he, he, and he wins in the end. You know, that's a wonderful thing about Revelation. It's that uh, the, the final chapter tells us you know who wins. And that, uh, that really says a lot right there. John 13, 19, Jesus said, Now I tell you before it comes to pass, that when it does come to pass, that you might believe that I am he. Why does he tell us? That we might believe that he is the one. Prophecy is to help us recognize Jesus as the one. Look at uh, John 16, 4. 